What's up guys, it's your boy Z Maniac Gamers. Today we're doing a style of video that I've been wanting to do for a long time and this is a budget sub $700 PC build. I got it roughly to that amount and you will not believe the parts I found and we're only using Newegg for this build. The reason I went with that is just because it's a lot easier to use the same site for everything than have to scour other sites and they generally have very competitive and sometimes a lot cheaper prices as well as exclusive rebates that you can get and save extra money. So it's a great site to use and I've used it for a lot of my builds and no, I'm not sponsored by them. I wish I would be because then I'd actually make a lot of money, but I just wanted to make this because I thought it would be really interesting. So I am signed up for their deals. So I get these emails with these coupon codes. And right away, when I saw this Ryzen 5 3600 today, I was like, I gotta, I gotta look at that. I gotta see. So what I'm doing is at least I'm trying to look for a budget gaming PC that has streaming capability. I know that a lot of people might and given with everything going on with the social distancing, I figured that people are more home and you know might be able to use this. So I looked at this processor, but after doing some scouring, I found that there's actually a better deal on their site. If you go to the bundles page for CPUs, you can actually find it bundled with a, a decent motherboard for around $303. So you're actually saving a bit of money here. You're getting the motherboard for around $140 but it's an X570 motherboard. And what's really cool about this is that actually, when you can add this promo code in and save the $10 that you had on this initial deal. So you're saving an additional $10. So then I was looking around for GPUs and sure enough, there's a 1660 Super right now for 239 with a $15 rebate plus the 699 shipping. Let's take a look here, we're suddenly at 540 that now that might be daunting but these are all your most expensive parts already out of the way yes maybe you could save a little bit more money on the motherboard if you wanted to go with a b450 or an x470 motherboard so there are other options there uh i think this is another great option for motherboards the only thing is you might have to do a bios update and i know that some of you may not be familiar with how to do that and the only way you can do a bios update is if you have an existing Ryzen second or first gen processor and a lot of you don't have that so that's why I didn't go with anything below 570 because some of them may or may not support it and then you'd have to do a BIOS update. There's also this one I think this is a great motherboard this one is probably my favorite one out of them all because of just the, the VRM looks very hefty the back has a lot of ports and just the IO panel looks very nice and I love the color so honestly I would probably go with this over the bundle deal. So if you remove those out, actually, you're getting about a $10 price difference between one of these or the one that it's bundled with. So that's totally up to you. I personally would go with MSI or ASUS, although Gigabyte could be good too. So if you're looking for the absolute cheapest one and I doubt you're overclocking, then you're good to go with that. Uh, I also wanted to mention this Ryzen does come with a CPU cooler, so we're gonna keep the stop cooler for that just because to save on costs and it's perfectly adequate for a 3600. So I was saying, we basically have the gist of the costs all allocated here once we've got these parts. These are the most expensive parts of the build and we're at $540. We're almost at that 700, but the rest of the parts are still pretty cheap. So there's actually quite a few deals. There's this SSD. And since we're going for the cheap one, we're going with the 500 gig Vulcan Team Group SSD. It's not an amazing SSD, but it's still an awesome SSD for the price. You could go less, but I really wouldn't suggest saving the $10 here when the 500 gigabyte one will be much more adequate than a 250 gig one. So we're gonna get that for our storage. Do not buy a hard drive, please. It's 2020. Hard drives need to stop existing. Like they are just obsolete and a waste of money. Now we have RAM. It does not matter what kind of RAM you buy for the most part whether it's CL14 or CL18, you're relatively gonna get the same performance unless you're running something like a 2080 or above and you really wanna max out your FPS by like five, you know? But other than that, for any budget build, you really won't see a difference. Judging most, you won't be hefty overclockers. Definitely go with the 3200 RAM. I really like the red color, so I'm gonna stick with that. It kinda stands out. We're at 668 bucks. Uh, right now, we're almost done with the build here. We've got almost everything don't worry i didn't forget anything i made sure z maniac take care of you homies power supply here this is i'll tell you what i recommend and this is up to you 
you should get at least a 450 watt one. Honestly, you're fine with that. You could go 500 watt, but you really don't need a 500 watt CPU or 550. With these two, with this video card and this CPU are very, very efficient and it really doesn't benefit you by spending the more money on it. Yes, you could for $15 more, I guess you could get the 600 watt power supply, but it would kind of be overkill for this build and not really necessary. And especially with that $10 rebate, bringing it down to just $40, that's a great deal. So let's let's see what we're at now. We're at like 700 bucks. Thought we'd be a little bit lower, but maybe something cost a little bit more than I was expecting. We're very close to our number though right now. We basically have everything that we need. The only thing left is like a PC case and that you could pick out whatever you really wanted. Uh, there's quite a great selection on Newegg, you know, to buy whatever you'd like, really. Uh, it depends on how much you want to spend, but judging if you're going for budget, you probably want to save that and not care about how it looks, but more care about what's in it, because that's a more efficient way to spend your money when you're looking at something like that. This one looks kind of cheesy, but kind of cool. Not gonna lie, I low-key like this. I kind of like that. This one's a really cool one, it's a little bit more expensive, has RGB strips. I believe it only has a case fan. I believe it only comes with one case fan, yeah. It really only comes with one case fan, though they advertise it with three. Uh, this one does come with two, 65, and there was one more I saw that I kind of liked. Oh wow, these are just so cool. Wow, I just love PC cases, PCs in general, they're just so amazing. This one. Now, this is a bit cheaper of a one, and you can tell it does look cheaper, especially in blue. I don't think it's that cool. I feel like if you would get it in black or gray, it would look way better, or maybe even white. Yeah, white, that looks nice. Oh, actually, black is the cheapest, but it has matching fans, and if you add it to your cart right now, let's see, we should be under $800 right now with the final price of everything. Oh, I see. So I guess the blue one is actually cheaper. I'm not actually, I kind of like it. For the discount, I kind of like that. So you could go with a blue or black one. You're roughly getting the same price there. Either way, you're saving about a dollar. So I should honestly change this to say sub 800 build. It's still not a bad price at all by any means. And then if you want to spend more, you always could get a 3600X. You could change the motherboard, play around with it, find a better deal. I wouldn't get a more expensive SSD at this price point and the RAM is, should be totally fine. And once again, power supply, you could once again upgrade that if you wanted, but you really don't need more than 500 watts here. And a 450 should be more than enough for a 1660 Super and uh, 3600. The reason we went MSI and spent a little bit more on the GPU is because I think it's more important to have a good GPU than get something a little bit cheaper. And there's one feature that is exclusive to Nvidia that makes this worth it for a lot of gamers, streamers, and all of the above, because that's awesome. So Nvidia has an NVENC encoder that lets you record on GPUs above the 1660, so 1660, Super, TI, and everything else on top of that, has a chipset on it that basically lets you record with Nvidia's new NVENC encoding software that takes a very, very low hit on your FPS to the point that it's totally worth it to use one of these over any CPU to encode or stream. So you're better off using this than Ryzen 3900X. You're better off using this than any other CPU to encode because it's just gonna be faster. And I know that a lot of gamers stream right now, so I think it's very important to have that feature, have that option for you guys. So that's why I went with that GPU instead of something else. You could have also gone Intel, but I wouldn't. Also, for what it's worth for myself, I would not get a 30 X570 motherboard simply because I absolutely cannot stand that fan on the motherboard. So I would get a different motherboard. You could even save an extra $30 or so with an MSI motherboard. Although keep in mind, it might not work as nicely as you'd like it to, but you're saving 50 bucks. So you have to really gauge that and see if it's worth it to you. Anyway, I hope you found this video really helpful. And if you wanna see more content like this, please consider subscribing and blow up this video. If this video gets 10,000 views, I'll build this PC.